All right, the president's acting DHS secretary is going to Congress tomorrow. The message, the message is simple. He's begging both sides to do something to help take care of the flow and the kids on the southern border. Take a look at the reality. We get this video from them, groups of more than a thousand migrants at a time. You see them coming across. They're not making a run for the border. They're expecting to be detained, okay? This is a sight you see often. Adults carrying kids on their backs. Are those their kids? Are they somebody else's kids? Whatever. They're kids coming across that way. And then when they get here, not an easy trip, right? Medical treatment. Um, you know, different types of maladies, uh, a safe place to sleep, and often the resources are exhausted. The head of DHS is here tonight to make the case to you. Kevin McAleenan, welcome back to primetime. Good to have you. What is the reality that Americans need to know? Good to be with you, Chris. The reality is that we have an unprecedented humanitarian and security crisis on our border. 144,000 crossings last month. We had one day with 5,800, and then you see large groups like that group of 1,000. That group was made up entirely of people from Central America, Guatemala, Honduras, and El Salvador, 900 members of family units, 60 unaccompanied children, uh, and just a few single adults. That, that highlights the crisis right there. So you're getting it both ways. Um, because from the right, we'll get to the lawmakers in a second. I'm just talking about political perception. From the right, well, they're all gang members and, and druggers and killers, so I don't care. I don't, I don't care about what's happening there. If you can't take care of them, good. That's on them for coming. How do you deal with that? Well, that's the border security aspect of the problem. It's not just families and kids. Uh, we also have 35% of those crossing that are trying to evade capture. Mm -hmm. Hidden within that group are single adults that, that might have a criminal record either here in the U.S. or in their home countries. Uh, 17,000 last year. We're seeing more this year. Mm -hmm. 808 known gang members. And, and more importantly, we have drug smugglers using the families and kids as a diversionary tactic to try to bring their poison across at the same time. So it's a complex, multifaceted problem, and we absolutely do need action from Congress to help us address it. Then you get the other side who says, but the president, now you have to, you know, now that you're in charge, you got to own some of the politics. He misled us about what I call on this show the brown menace, that these are mostly kids and the people bringing them, and we knew it was going to be like that, and he didn't prepare us for that, and the fence was never going to be a fix for that. So this is what he gets. Now he's got to pay the price himself. How do you deal with that? Yeah, I don't think that's a fair criticism. Uh, we, we absolutely have drugs coming across. We have gang members. We have security risks to our communities that are coming in this flow. Uh, but yeah, we, we have a current crisis with families and children. They are the majority, the majority of who's, of who's coming across, right? Exactly right. Right, and that was, that was the deception. You don't own that. You've never made that case to me. You've always said fences are one tool in a big box, and you were always worried about exactly what's happening now. So you've been to Congress before. You've talk, talked to left and right, privately and publicly. What do they tell you about right. giving you and HHS the help and money you need? So these unprecedented numbers mean that there's unprecedented pressure on the system. Health and Human Services is the department charged with caring for children that come across the border unaccompanied. Uh, their resources have been overwhelmed. We've asked for $4.5 billion in emergency funding 40 days ago, Chris. Uh, and 3.3 billion of that, 75%, goes directly to caring for children appropriately. If HHS doesn't get that funding, those kids back up in Border Patrol stations, which I've testified twice to the committee I'm going to see tomorrow, it's an inappropriate setting for families and children in a Border Patrol station. What can happen? People will say, look, they're just numbers. I get that he wants his money. They're always trying to scare us with the panic. They'll handle it. They have places. They always, this is what they do just to get more. What do you say? I say these facilities are overcrowded, that no American should be comfortable with children in a police station for days on end. That is not an appropriate setting for kids. HHS has the right kind of facilities, they have the right kind of care, uh, and they need the funding to provide it. Uh, about a billion of the funding, the rest of the 25%, is for DHS to just manage this crisis, for transportation, for facilities, for temporary facilities that we can put people in a better setting, for medical care. Uh, th these are key elements that we just need to do the job given the flows that we're facing. And it's frankly why the president took decisive action uh, last week to generate and galvanize a conversation with Mexico to get to a new level of partnership. Generate and galvanize. Now, the reporting comes out that the tariffs brought them to the table. Then the Mexicans come out and say, listen, we'd agreed to all this already. We don't know why he needed this brinksmanship. And then the president says, ah, but there is something yet to come. 
Do you know of something yet to come? You don't have to tell me what it is, although that'd be nice. But is there something yet to come or are the Mexicans right? Let's see if we can untangle this. Please. I've been working with the government of Mexico for 18 years. And you went to the triangle issues. countries trying to get them involved and to figure out how to help them there, too. It's important that the American people know that. So Absolutely. what's the deal with Mexico? For, for the last 18 years, this is the most significant set of commitments, operational and policy, that we've ever had from a government of Mexico. Uh, let me just be very clear on that. They've committed 6,000 National Guard to secure their southern border. They've made a policy statement that it's a priority for the government of Mexico to gain operational control of their border for the first time. Uh, that's a big deal. Uh, that, that's a game changer for us. Did, were they talking to you about that before this or after it? So they've been talking to DHS. We've been asking them for additional border security efforts on their southern border for years. Uh, and they've provided that in, in fits and starts. In 15 and 16, under the prior administration, uh, they did more than ever in terms of repatriations of those crossing. Mm -hmm. uh, but in this administration, they'd committed about 300 additional immigration folks, a, a few hundred additional officers to support them. 6,000 is a tenfold increase, a complete sea change in their approach. But they, they say they were going to do that before the tariffs? No, we, we had not heard anything like a number of 6,000. We, we had heard that they had increased security and the numbers were in the hundreds. We asked for transportation uh, checks in the, in the interior. We got 100,000 people flowing to our border a month on main arteries right through the center of Mexico. They, they've committed to addressing that flow by setting up checkpoints with their security forces. Mm -hmm. They've also agreed to work with us on our shared border to address those places where you see that, that large group type of crossing, 1,000 people in one group. Right. Uh, we see two, three, 400 a day uh, all the time now in RGB. Good. Hopefully that makes a difference. Hopefully you're being able to send people to Mexico to wait, who come from Mexico while you're processing their case. Uh, now, last question. Yeah. So this is what I hear. On the right, Everybody talks about your situation the same way. Oh, yeah, yeah, bad, bad, it's a crisis, but there's always a but. On the right, it's but, it's all about the Democrats, and we asked for the money. Yeah, but they were one and done with the ask, uh, Secretary, as you know. The right is not chasing this the way the president chased the fence, the way they chased the tariffs. They're not chasing after getting you the money the same way. On the left, they say, Kevin McAleenan can get the check. Azar, the HHS secretary, they can get the check tomorrow. Just give us guarantees that the places you put the kids will be safe and that you won't try to undermine the law and rush them through the system so you can deport them. Give us the guarantees. They won't give us to them. That's why they're not getting the money. Your response? My response is that HHS has those guarantees. They work to get state licensing for all of their permanent facilities. For a temporary influx while they're gaining licensing, that's, that's a temporary process, and I know that they'll take good care of those kids. Uh, and we're going to continue to advocate for that with Congress. Uh, we need them out of Border Patrol stations. We need them in a better, safer setting, uh, at the same time as we work with Mexico to change this dynamic and stop the flow in the first place. I don't want to get into it because it's too drastic, but if you get nothing, this month, next month are the biggest flow months for this, the summer hiring season. Will you be surprised if there are tragedies if nothing changes? No. I, I mean, unfortunately, I've had to say that at multiple points, publicly talking about the challenges we're facing, the, the conditions in our, our custody. I very much worry about a tragedy. We have hundreds of cases of H1N1 flu right now that we're mm -hmm. trying to manage, uh, get appropriate medical care, get people to hospitals when they need it. Uh, but really, we need a reduction uh, in the flow, uh, and that's why we're partnering with Mexico to address it. But we also need ability to move people to safe settings with HHS, to move them out of Border Patrol stations to ICE, and that's what we've asked Congress to help us with. We're, we're also going to talk tomorrow about a legislative solution that would address this crisis and would have prevented it, frankly, if, mm -hmm. if we had been able to work with Congress 18 months ago when it was originally proposed to the Hill. There are lots uh, we'll of rules. We'll be talking about it tomorrow. There are lots of rules to be discussed. But if you want to get money for this right now, you're going to have to keep it simple. Because as soon as they right. attach something to it, it's a dead letter there, unfortunately, in our state of play right now. Secretary, good luck to you in making the case tomorrow. We'll be watching, and we will keep reporting on this. Thanks, Chris. Appreciate the time.